Do you see my screen? Not yet. Oh, sorry. How about now? It's coming. Yeah, I do. Okay. Now we have finished the screening studies and incidental prevalence bias distribution. Okay. Distribution, we will, mm -hmm. there's one more thing, and we'll finish the normal distribution, and then we'll go to the statistical hypothesis and confidence mm -hmm. interval of common statistical test, and we will all set. We'll finish the bias statistic so easily, okay? Mm -hmm. Now we will finish the normal distribution, okay? Okay. Let's take like an example, like uh, the in the US, some of the they are taking the normal distribution. Mm -hmm. It's called like if we take like two hundred people. Mm -hmm. First of all, normal distribution it's bell shaped as we have said earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. According to Research results of a study of many scientists. We have got those numbers. You don't mm -hmm. need to bother yourself how they, those come. Just all that you need is to memorize it. We mm -hmm. have figured out that most of the people stand within one standard deviation of the mean. Let's consider mm -hmm. this a mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two people. Like uh, there is two standard deviation, like two standard deviation, and there is two standard deviation of a mean. Okay, mm -hmm. and there is, let's say, three standard deviation of the mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's imagine you are some other scores. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine the mean, two ten or two twenty, as you like. Okay, doesn't mm -hmm. matter the numbers. This is the mean. Mm -hmm. And this is the standard deviation, let's say 10. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you get 230, you will be in one standard deviation above the mm -hmm. mean. If you get 210, you get one standard deviation below the mean. So mm -hmm. most of the people, okay, which is 68% mm -hmm. of the people, Mm -hmm. are within those standard deviations, mm -hmm. which is one standard deviation of the mean. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there is, this is like, let's say, 86% within one standard deviation of the mean. Mm -hmm. But there is 95% of people within two mm -hmm. standard deviation of the mean. Mm -hmm. It's one and one. Two standard deviation of the mean. 68% mm -hmm. is within one standard deviation. 95 within two standard deviation of the mean. And there is one more standard deviation, mm -hmm. which is 99% of the people within standard deviation. So I'll give you an example. Let's say, as we have said, that 10 is, is the standard error of the mean. So mm -hmm. plus 10, this is 230 is one standard deviation. 240 mm -hmm. within two standard deviation. Mm -hmm. 250 within three standard deviation. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the same thing work for here. Okay? Mm -hmm. 200, say one... 94, 92, same thing. Mm -hmm. This is the passing score. So, 99% of the people, mm -hmm. okay, is between 192 and 250. Mm -hmm. Okay? So they get scores from 192 and 250. Okay? Mm -hmm. And 95% of the people, they get from 200 to 240, right? Mm -hmm. And there is 68% of the people get from 210 and 230, okay? Mm -hmm. That's that's a normal standard, a normal distribution. Mm -hmm. 
the most important thing here with this normal normal distribution is that we figure out how many sometimes I, I will I will give you like with this with this example okay mm -hmm. I want you to know if there is imagine like 400 mm -hmm. 400 student took the Somali exam the Somali step one exam mm -hmm. okay how many people of them they get above 240 if there is just 400 people mm -hmm. yeah can you tell sure we said um that 95 percent of the people are going to be 240 so 95 percent of 240 is like about 20 people or something so first, 95 let's, let's let's start gradually first how many people from if there is 400 people uh -huh. let's, let's say let's say 1000 so as to become the calculation become more much more easier okay imagine that 1000 students took you as a Malay step one okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how many people will score between 200 and 240 200 and 240 200 and 240 95% of the people perfect which is 95% multiplied by 1000 you will uh -huh. get 95 950 people yeah okay mm -hmm. that's that's the issue sometimes they ask us not about those from 200 to 240 most of the time they ask how many percent of the people score above 240 mm -hmm. how many people mm. just uh you said 99 so probably just like one percent of the people 240 is 95 as you have, as you have said, uh -huh. according to this uh -huh. our scale. So ninety-nine percent. So the third standard deviation. Didn't you say that ninety-nine percent of the people fall in that group? Yeah, exactly. You are true. If I said like, which people from one ninety-two? How many people from one ninety uh, give scores from one ninety-two up to two fifty score? It's ninety-nine right. percent. That's, that's ninety-nine. That's that's. Uh, you answer this question. That's perfect. But as we have said, 95% of of the people who got mm -hmm. between two, two, 200 and 240, okay? <coughs> so now, just left there, is, there, is, there is, you see, just 950. There is 50 right. people, okay? Mm -hmm. There is 50 students mm -hmm. who are not within this scale, between 200 right. and 240. Right. There is 25. Who are going to get 250 and 25 we're going to get 192. Perfect. Okay. 25 mm -hmm. who get above the 240 and mm -hmm. 25 I get below the 200. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if there is 1000, if I, they, they ask a question like how many people get above 240, about, about two standard deviation. Mm -hmm. What we are going to do is just like simple calculation. 95 percent mm -hmm. okay fall within 200 240 okay mm -hmm. five percent okay between five, 240 and 250 yeah five percent <coughs> between 240 240 to 250 and below from 200 to 192 mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. basically it's actually it's 2.5 mm -hmm. percent above the 240 and 2.5 percent below the 200 okay mm -hmm. so what we are going to do we can just multiply 2.5 mm -hmm. percent and 1000 we'll get 25 okay yeah so it sounds easy right Mm-hmm. We've got uh, on the same thing. They they usually most commonly they ask about twenty-five percent. They don't ask about ninety-nine. 
they don't ask about 99, just but just let it in your mind. But uh, it's 95, the most of the question, they ask about 95, okay? Mm -hmm. And all what they want is you want to, to know how many people are more than two standard deviation above the mean. Most commonly they ask this question, typically. Mm -hmm. I've encountered like more than, during my preparation solving QBanks, I've uh, encountered more than 20 questions asking about the same question, okay? So mm -hmm. that sounds easy, right? It does. Oh, okay. So that's perfect. Uh, now I'll give you uh, a little simple exercise. Can you tell me if there is 1,000 students, mm -hmm. okay, who took your Somali step one, how many of them will score between 210 to 230? 95%. 210 and 230. Oh, my bad. One standard deviation, 68%. Wonderful. It will be 680, okay? Mm hmm So that sounds easy, right? Mm hmm How many people will score above the 230? So, that'd be like what? What? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So that's like 99, so 68 minus 99, it's like, it's like five point something. Yeah, you can, you can just like, you do just like the following. 68 minus 100, how much is this? So we're left with 20, 32, so 16%. Okay, perfect. So 16% here and 16% here. Mm-hmm. 16% above one standard deviation, 16% below one standard deviation. So mm -hmm. basically, we're just multiplying 16% by 1000, we'll get 160 students, okay? Mm -hmm. If there is 1000 students who took the test, right? We'll mm -hmm. score above 230, right? So yes. That sounds easy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We move on. Would you like to move on? Yeah, we can move on. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Now we have finished the distribution. Now we will talk about the fun part. It's the statistical hypothesis, okay? Okay. The statistical hypothesis is just like the following. This is the fun part. I, I like this, this topic too much. Sounds challenging, but it's really easy. Okay. Okay. Take take another deep breath in before we start this next topic. <laughs> How is the breathing? Pretty good. Yeah, that's perfect. You know, Eva told me that that told, said that. We are in the United States. We don't. We don't breathe. We don't breathe. We have complicated life. We don't smile. We don't. <laughs> she smiles all the time. I don't know what yeah, she's yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, she smiles. Yeah, but she said that yeah. sometimes we don't breathe and we don't. That's why once we regulate our breathing and this breathing exercise help help us a lot remove a great amount of stress. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay, now we will start about the statistical hypothesis. There is mm -hmm. a very simple diagram for the statistical hypothesis. This is the following. There is something which is called p-value. P-value, mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's imagine that this line equal to, to p-value equal to 0.05 five percent okay yeah if the p-value let's imagine 0.2 percent below five percent 0.5 percent okay there's a situation uh, there is another situation if the p-value 0.113 like example okay mm -hmm. There is two sides. Let's imagine you are 
You are a side and me, I'm, I'm a side, okay? Mm -hmm. I will, me, I have, I have done a study, okay? Mm -hmm. Like imagine, like there is an association between, I said that A cause B. Mm -hmm. Or let's say, let's make it something funny. Let's say Skype. People who use Skype, okay, mm -hmm. tend to score higher. Okay. Okay. I like that. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go right here. Let's uh, let's change the weather from MI on COPD. Mm -hmm. Okay, the people who have, I, I I've done a study, people who, mm -hmm. who use Skype, they score high in the exam. Okay, and I got the p value all point two percent. Okay. Uh huh. Me, I have done a study and got that p value. Mm -hmm. But you are you are the gold standard. Me, I'm I'm just a student mm -hmm. you are my teacher okay okay you said that you are wrong mm -hmm. okay so when you said that i'm wrong mm -hmm. or when we have applied this into the real life in mm -hmm. real life it's it's not true like in my mm -hmm. study i have proved and like there is calculation mm -hmm. there's two parts calculation mm -hmm. and there is the real mm -hmm. In calculation, it appeared to be correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, I felt so happy. I have invented something new. That I knew that Skype goes mm -hmm. high. No one ever talked about it. But mm -hmm. in reality, there is no association. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. If there is, in reality, there is no association. We call it, there is no association between Skype and score high score. That's what's called type one error. Uh -huh. Alpha criteria. Okay. Uh -huh. This is a situation. Situation number one. Okay. Uh -huh. Can you repeat that situation number one? So when there's no difference between the one, the things is not applicable in the real world, then we have made the um, alpha one error. Exactly. If the calculation is correct. But mm -hmm. the real life is not. That's mm -hmm. called type one error. As simple mm -hmm. as this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now we will encounter the different situation. Mm -hmm. The same thing. Let's say uh, you, you want the same. Let, let's say that one one. Let's say a different a different study. Okay. Let's say that Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause you a bad score. This is a study, okay? Mm -hmm. Facebook cause a bad score. Mm -hmm. But I've got the p-value when I've done a study. There is a calculation. Mm -hmm. There is the real. In the calculation, I have figured out the Facebook doesn't cause a bad score. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the p-value is above the 0.0%, okay? Mm -hmm. If the, the, the p-value above the 0.0%, that means the, the calculation is, is not true. But if it's below, that means it's true, the probability. As mm -hmm. the probability is, as the probability go smaller, it's better. If it's grow larger, it's not better. So, in the calculation, I've got no, not significant. Like the Facebook doesn't cause a bad score, okay? Mm -hmm. But in the reality, the Facebook cause a bad score. Mm -hmm. Indeed, cause a bad score. Mm -hmm. So, what's that type of error? That's called type 2 error. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the whole situation. Like if I have done a study, me, I've said that P uh, value the Facebook doesn't go to bad school, it doesn't go to bad school. It got calculation not significant. Mm -hmm. But you said you are the gold standard, you are my teacher, you are more experienced than me. You said no, mm -hmm. Facebook goes a bad school. Mm -hmm. So that's type two error. Okay? 
So, uh -huh. very simple exercise. Like, I'll, I'll show you a simple exercise. Me, yeah. I have done a study about uh, if you if you do meditation, okay, uh -huh. you, you will have a better life experience and uh, less anxiety, okay? Okay, are you with me? Yeah. My calculation said that that's not significant. Meditation has nothing to do with anxiety. Mm. But in real life, no, meditation relieves anxiety. Mm -hmm. So what type of error is that? So your calculations were wrong, but yes. the reality is correct. So isn't like type two? Wonderful. That's perfect. You're amazing. That's perfect. Okay. Now uh, we will do one more exercise and I'll give you one more exercise. Mm -hmm. Like, like, let's say the iPhone people who use iPhone, okay, they got a higher scores. Mm -hmm. And live live a happier life. <laughs> mm -hmm. In my calculation, it appeared to be true. The people who mm -hmm. use iPhone have a happier life and get high scores, high mm -hmm. scores. But in reality, it's not significant. There's no amount of that associated. Mm -hmm. Which type of error is that? So that'd be type one error. Perfect. That's perfect. Okay. So when you say real life, what are we comparing it to? Are we comparing it to like other studies? Are we comparing it to like a gold standard? Like what are we comparing it to? The real life, when we apply it on the real uh -huh. life, like, mm -hmm. like I'll give you an example in a clinical situation. Mm -hmm. if, if I said that. So how would they ask the question in your world? Like the, I mean, not your world, on the exam. So they would give us some study. Yeah. Then they have to give us enough information to saying that the researcher found that meditation have no relationship with anxiety. However... In, in real life, there there is a relation. So which but, type of error? And they bring so many. So choices. that's type two error. Perfect. That's perfect. So they were foolish and they rejected the hypothesis when it was true. Yeah, exactly. They have rejected the hypothesis when it's in fact true. This so it'd be you... interesting when I do the questions, how it goes, right? I'm really excited to uh, do the questions and see how much of this is really sticking in my head. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, I'll, uh, you won't try some questions, but you know, it's. Uh, I'll give you an example. They mm -hmm. they they bring just like this. The, the, they are asking about this just like this. Like I'll give you an example question. Mm -hmm. Like let's say. Let's say let's say carbidilol. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have done a study that carbidilol. Mm -hmm. Carbidilol mm -hmm. decrease the mortality and morbidity of people with ischemic heart disease or MI. Okay? Mm -hmm. Carbidilol. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this study. Mm -hmm. But in my calculation, the p value appeared to be 0.13 or any, any value more than 0.5%. Okay? Mm -hmm. That means I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm not true. Yeah, your data says that that's not true. Yeah, uh, in my calculation, calculation says right. that yeah. I'm true. Carbidilol doesn't uh, decrease the right. mortality of MI. Mm -hmm. But in reality, when they have experienced it, get, mm -hmm. they, not calculation, not on the papers, in the mm -hmm. reality, there's right. a, they are they are dif differing the, between the paper and the reality. In the reality, mm -hmm. they have brought up people with MI, gave mm -hmm. them carbidilol. It appeared to be increase okay. their, mm -hmm. uh, to be increase their life and decrease the morbidity and mortality. Mm -hmm. So, which type of error in my study is this? So now we made a beta type two error. Perfect. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. I, I'll give you an. That's that's okay. That's an example of type two error. I'll mm -hmm. give you an, an another example. I, I have set a study. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like beta blocker, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Or let's say beta agonist mm-hmm. salmetrol. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Salmetrol with a relationship with asthma improvement. Mm-hmm. Okay, it can't set to anything, but this is just an example. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In my in my calculation, the p value. Mm-hmm. Okay. P value appears to be like 0.01%. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. It choose it choose a different drug, so that mm-hmm. it will become more make sense more. Let's say like. Let's say heparin, anything, okay? Mm-hmm. We are studying randomly. P value appears to be 0.1. Mm-hmm. Help, help the people with asthma, okay? So mm-hmm. my calculation appears to be true. And my right. calculation appears to be true. I have set a study on mm-hmm. the, 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 the relative risk between people. The mm-hmm. heparin help the people with asthma, improve the symptoms, okay? Mm-hmm. According to my calculation. Mm-hmm. According to the experiment, like I took, I took like 200 people, mm-hmm. I've done a study over them, I've done an experiment, mm-hmm. appears mm-hmm. to be true, correct. The heparin help people with asthma. Oh, mm-hmm. I felt so happy, I'm going to make a lot of money, ah, that is all. Mm-hmm. But then in reality... When I applied it up to one million person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in the total population, it appears different situation. Heparin mm-hmm. has nothing to do with asthma. Mm-hmm. Has nothing to do with asthma. Mm-hmm. Which type of error is that? So then, this is like the alpha error. Perfect. Type type one. That's perfect. So it's the question you, that you will encounter is the same as, okay. as this. Okay. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. You you take just like it can be on number needed to treat on clinical trial can be on observational studies that we have said earlier. Like, uh, do you remember we had previously we we said about uh, a few moments ago we said about COPD, right? Mm-hmm. We said that smoking. Three times, relative risk, three times, right? Mm-hmm. Three times, like calculation, our calculation appears to be correct, right? Right, yeah. But in reality, let's suppose, not truth, suppose that smoking has nothing to do with COPD, if it's in reality. Mm-hmm. Smoking has nothing to do with COPD. Which type of error is that? Again, we made type 1 error. Perfect. So now you are all set. And you will be perfect. You won't miss any question. Okay. About that in the exam. Okay. Great. Now we have finished the statistical hypothesis. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now here's the fun part: the confidence interval. Mm-hmm. Right. Now we have talked about screening, studies, observational, and so there's a prevalence bias distribution confidence interval. Okay. Now we will talk about the confidence interval. Confidence interval. I will give you an example. The same example. Like we said that smoking causing COPD. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have calculated the relative risk previously. In the previous example, it appeared to be how much? Three, Three, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, three. The people who smoke, it's a three times they tend to get COPD mm-hmm. more than the people who do not smoke, right? Mm-hmm. I am. I have set a study, but I'm not quite sure. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure. So, but I am pretty confident that the relative risk it's in between mm-hmm. two to four. Okay. 
I, I'm not quite sure. I have done a study. I figured out that it's like three three times the smoking increased risk for COPD three times. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm not quite sure. I'm but I'm pretty sure one hundred percent that the relative risk should be either between two to four. Like the smoking mm -hmm. increased risk for COPD either two times or four times. Okay. Uh, from two times to four times, two times, three times, four times, okay? Mm. But I'm not quite sure. Do mm -hmm. you think that my study is is good? I'll, I'll give you another situation. This is a study number one, okay? Mm -hmm. So that you will compare. Study number two, the same situation. Like, like imagine that you, 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 okay? Current. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then that study you you have appeared there. Me, I have done the same study smoking and COPD. Mm -hmm. The relative risk appeared to be. I've got uh, like example. I've got two or three the same as you. Let's say mm -hmm. the same. I got the relative risk is three, three times. I said that the smoking increased risk for COPD three times. Mm -hmm. But the confidence interval, this confidence interval, the con but my con confidence interval, I'm, I'm in between 0 0.5 up to four. Mm -hmm. That's my confidence interval. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. Either the smoking decreased risk for COPD or the increased risk for COPD. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. Between this number mm -hmm. and this number. This mm -hmm. number below one. Mm -hmm. Okay, below one. That's why mm -hmm. it's mean that decreased risk for COPD. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that number means that it's mean a tragedy. Like if it's, it's contrary to, to my study. Mm -hmm. uh, it means smoking protective against COPD. This number. Yeah. Yeah. While this number means that smoking is four times causing COPD. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Four times to dispose risk factor to COPD. So, what do you think is which study is better? Number one. Perfect. Because this is pretty sure. Both of the values that I'm using, mm -hmm. both of the values are above one. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is correct study. But if there is a value below one, that means you are wrong. Not wrong, my mm -hmm. friend. Yeah, you are not good at making study. Go figure out what's the problem with your study. Okay? Right, yeah. So that's all about the competition study. They, they bring many questions. I got a question on this concept in my exam. Can you imagine? Did you have a lot of questions on your uh, exam? For yeah, 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 I got a lot of biostats. They would, love biostats. For like, for example, I don't know about step one, but I know a friend of mine, she took her step two. She said biostat is only 5% on step two. But I know it's about 14 to 18% on step three. Oh, it's too much. Uh, yeah. In my exam, in my step one exam, I got so many questions on biostatistics, actually. So would you say like what, 10% of the total exam? Like, did you have four or five questions each block? No, not that. I can say like, I got like, you can say 20 questions in the whole. Okay. 20 so to 15 blocks, questions, yeah. Right? In the whole, in the whole docs. So are, like there's seven blocks on step one and there are like 40 questions in each block or 44? 40, 40 in each block. So 200, 240 questions. Yeah, yeah, it's an average. I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure, but it's from, I'm not quite sure. My confidence interval from... 15 questions, <laughs> up to 20 <laughs> questions. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's my fair. confidence interval, okay? So that's like about 4 to 5% actually. Yeah, yeah, you can't say that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's just too much, like 20 questions, it's, it's too much. We, we, but you got them all right, so you have yeah, nothing to worry about. Especially we have you know, some other exam, we, we should not sacrifice any question. We should do sweat and tear on each question. And it's exactly. easy. It's all easy. So did you, like, 
do you do you just start from question one and then you just go to question 40 or do you skip questions and you come back or how do you do that or how did you do it I oh, guess. okay what, what i have done is, is, is the following i mm -hmm. i start with the question number one okay mm -hmm. and then two as in sequence if i encounter like a question i may not get a, an, his its idea of uh, I I found it like a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. I mark it mm -hmm. and then go to the next question. But do you pick an answer or you don't pick an answer? Sometimes I don't pick. Sometimes I pick. Okay. Yeah, but sometimes I don't pick an answer. Just mark it and then come back to it. Okay. Yeah, but many questions. When I come back to it, I found, figured out it's, it's concept so easy and I know it uh, like my name. But mm -hmm. sometimes when you encounter a situation, you get uh, anxiety or something like that, disturb, block, block your thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's a huge problem in the exam. I've got so many friends, like, uh, they, they, they got terrified at the exam mm -hmm. at the Prometric Center, and they've got nervous, they got blocked, blocked their ideas. That's, that's why they, they've done so many mistakes that they know already. So many mm -hmm. easy, easy questions they got wrong, just mm -hmm. due to the anxiety. So it's very important to teach ourselves how to control our brain because the most important challenge in our life is to control our brains. It's, yes, I agree yeah, with you. It's not an, an easy topic. Like we can, you can do an exercise each day. You can do it's like, a practice, right? Yeah, it's with, ongoing with your practice. with your with your spinal spinal cord is right. You are sitting. You are standing. You are standing. Just closing your eyes and in, in, in a space there to when no one can interrupt you, and just just notice just noticing your thoughts, noticing your thoughts first. The 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 human brain is just like a sky, a sky filled with the clouds. Clouds is the thoughts mm -hmm. and ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Once you start, first of all, you find lots of clouds. But when whenever the idea comes. Just leave it, leave it, and let it go. Someone, who, if you train yourself to let it go, and re just leave the cloud. As the mm -hmm. time passes by, you will have the clouds clear, and you have a clear sky. Mm -hmm. If you if you start with 20 minutes each day, and then you for 20 minutes. Me, I'm doing it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. If you start doing it for 20 minutes. Each day, within within, I, I promise you, within a week, and we mm -hmm. can help. You will notice a great impact on your life, on your thinking, and you'll discover who you really are. Because mm -hmm. we are, we are way more beyond that's just the, just our thoughts and our imaginations and our ideas. We mm -hmm. are we are spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. We can have a, a separate discussion on this thing. It's really interesting this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is really yeah. interesting. Me and Eva I got uh, so many discussions about those issues, and I discovered that you know a lot about that spiritual teaching and what's the awakening and mm -hmm. enlightenment. Hopefully, we will have yep. a, a discussion like this for mm -hmm. once. Once we master the biostatistics soon. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's all about the confidence interval. All what you need to know. Now the confidence mm -hmm. interval is easy, right? Mm -hmm. What is easy? Oh, that's perfect. Now we will talk about the common common statistical testing, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Common statistical testing, there there is two 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 important things that I want you to know. There is mm -hmm. what's called T test. Okay? And there mm -hmm. is what's called chi square. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Okay, chi square. Mm -hmm. The t test. Do you, you know what's the t test? I think t test for like comparing um, mean of two groups. Two studies, yeah. Okay. Compare mean of two groups. Okay. Mm -hmm. While chi square compare like the percent of the 
categorical outcomes. Mm -hmm. Like, let's example three ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine like we compare African American with Asian with Caucasian and so forth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Compare categorical and compare categorical values. Like we mm -hmm. can compare like those with like let's take two peoples. Two groups mm -hmm. of people. One with low fibr uh, low fibrinogen diet. That's one of the usual questions. Mm -hmm. And one with high high fibrinogen diet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also. Uh, apply into the chi square okay mm -hmm. and there is a, a really wonderful diagram that i have found about comparing all those studies just just in mm -hmm. case you may encounter you may, okay you may encounter any question like this okay the diagram is just like the following. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see my screen, right? Yeah. We have variables. If you, if you like, you write that, this diagram with me. It's really important. Mm -hmm. Okay, variables. In the variables, there are The variables, maybe they are means, mm -hmm. okay? Maybe mm -hmm. proportions. Okay. Okay. Which one do you like to start with first? Means or proportions? Uh, means sounds good. Okay, that's perfect. Means. Means, there is two types. If there is independent samples, Okay. Independent samples. Like let's let's take an example. Like if we take like a group, a separate group A, and we've got a mean a number, mm -hmm. and group B a mean a different number. Okay. Mm. Independent sample. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like diff different group of people. Like mm -hmm. Group A and B. But if this mean of two groups mm -hmm. differ. But if there is same group, same group over time, mm -hmm. like imagine if we take a group A, okay, and follow it, mm -hmm. at that point of time, we got a mean just like 50% or something like that. Just like a mean, mean, it's a mean, not person. Mm -hmm. And uh, and over the next few years, we've got like 60, okay? In the same group of people, okay? Same group over time. Mm -hmm. There is two different. If there is, if it is the same group over time, okay? If, if it says like in the question, it's those, those, those table. Once, just know the keys. You will answer any question you may encounter like this. Mm -hmm. If there is the same group, we call it paired, mm -hmm. paired t-test. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We call it paired t-test. If, if it's the same group. If it's independent sample, more than one group. If it is two groups, or if it is more than two groups. Mm -hmm. If we compare the mean of two groups, we call it t-test. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just let me know. Two sample t-test. Mm -hmm. 
to to sample t test okay if it's more than one group, we call it the ANOVA, Analysis of Variance. Mm -hmm. But it's still the mean. Okay? If it's one group, we call it per t-test. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, if in the question it gave you a mean and one group, what's that? Per t-test? Perfect. If there is a mean and two groups, what's that? So, T, that's still the t-test. To sample t-test, wonderful. If there is more than two groups? Then it's ANOVA. Wonderful. Analysis of variance. Okay. But then what do you mean by independent sample and dependent sample? Independent sample, that I mean by different groups. That's what I mean. Oh. Independent sample mean different groups. Like, I take... That's like I want, I give you an example. Mm -hmm. I'll take people, different people, ten people with Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, got a mean like let's imagine X. Okay, and peop, twenty people with Alzheimer, different people mm -hmm. with a mean Y. To compare those oh. number X and Y, we uh -huh. use to to sample t test. Okay, right. But there is three groups, mm -hmm. and we got X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. Three means it's called ANOVA, okay? Right. Thanks for this question, it's really good. But if we got the same the same sample, okay? Mm -hmm. And we got two means for the same sample, X, Y. Ah. Okay, we call it pair t-test, okay? Pair t-test, okay. It will give you, it said the same sample. It's important but to know those. One end of getting two means for the same group. Yeah, exactly. Okay, just following you. Yeah. Okay, so the means now it's so easy, right? Mm -hmm. Now we'll talk about the proportions, right? Mm -hmm. Ready? Yep. The proportions, there is, we, we, we see there is a big size mm -hmm. and there is a small sample size, small. Size of the sample, I mean. There is the big size and the small sample size, okay? Imagine this one big. This one small. Okay? Like, imagine proportions if we take like 1 million person. There, if we take just 10 persons, okay? Mm -hmm. If we are comparing the proportions of Big sample size, mm -hmm. like imagine like 1,000 person we are comparing, uh, there's some, that's called chi-square. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we compare the in small samples, mm -hmm. that we call it Fisher exact test. Mm -hmm. Because you know, I want you to know the those because sometimes in the question choices they give you mm -hmm. uh, like Fisher exercise, you should know what's that. So as not to be What's the cutoff? Is it the cutoff is hundred? Like what's the what what do they mean by small sample size? Or they will tell us small versus big small sample size like for ten person, ten people. Okay. Okay. Okay, they'll tell you if there is ten, like twenty people, okay? Okay. That's called Fisher exact test. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I can send you. I will send you the. I will send you the whole diagram. Have you wrote that diagram with me? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. And I will send you as well the. Okay. Uh, so now it sounds easy, right? Mhm. Mm okay. Well, we so, don't have to do the calculation. We just need to know, right? That's just pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. We you don't need calculations at all. No oh, good. They will just tell you. That's that's. Easier, okay. Mm -hmm. So the proportions. Can you tell me what's the proportions? So we have the big small big sample size versus the small sample size. So if the big sample size, we use the chi square, and if it's a small sample size, we the Fisher exact test. Oh, that's perfect. 
But what do we mean by proportion when you say like what are we the comparing two different proportions? So they're saying thousand people in a study. Um, we are looking at I don't know what are we looking at like two different things we are looking at. Yeah, I'll I'll give you I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready ready for example? I'll give you a case um, so that you will. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like imagine if we take two people, two groups, okay? Mm -hmm. Some people, look, I'll give you, there is a rule, we, we are studying the rule of thymectomy mm -hmm. in patients with myasthenia gravis, okay? Mm -hmm. Out of nine patients who undergo thymectomy, Seven show sustained improvement after one year of follow-up. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you that example. Mm -hmm. Like imagine out of out of nine 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 people undergo thymectomy. Mm -hmm. Okay, seven show improvement. Okay. Okay. Over one year. Out of 20, 20 people, okay, who under, undergo conservative treatment, mm -hmm. does not undergo thymectomy, mm -hmm. eight show sustained improvement, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. one year. Now, I gave you like two small samples, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you can conquer the proportions of them, like 7 out of 9. Mm -hmm. This 8 out of 20, 20. Is the proportion, mm -hmm. okay? Right. The proportions and two sam small sample size. Which, which one of those? Proportions mm -hmm. and small sample size. That's your exact test. Wonderful. That's perfect. That's it. Okay, got it. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're all set now. Mm -hmm. That's that's a case from the U world exactly this case what it talks about okay okay that's about they bring a question about facial exact test mm -hmm. the same thing worked for the other so side. then the other one we're just comparing the means that's all that's the yeah, one yeah they, they just don't they, the question asks which of the following mm -hmm. the investigator the test that used the investigator to analyze the study okay mm -hmm. okay sounds perfect mm, okay. Now we have finished the common statistical test. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pearson correlation. This is one of the easiest. Okay. This mm -hmm. Pearson correlation, so easy. Like, uh, we can take like, example, like number of, number of hours mm -hmm. and score. Mm -hmm. Like some people say one hour more higher the score. Mm -hmm. If it appeared to be just like this, one, mm -hmm. do you think it's a positive correlation or negative correlation? It's positive correlation. Wonderful. If it appeared to be just like this, mm -hmm. number of hours. So that's negative. Wonderful. Like people who study longer, the score mm -hmm. lower. Okay? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> but this is mm -hmm. negative. If it's so, it's negative correlation. This mm -hmm. correlation. So mm -hmm. the same thing. If you got like this, if it's straight, it's plus one. We call it. This is negative one. Mm -hmm. If it is like just like this, distributed just like this, mm -hmm. it's still positive, right? Yeah. Positive, but not one accurate element. You can accurate plus mm -hmm. eight or something like that. Plus mm -hmm. four point eight. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just like this, the same thing works here. Mm -hmm. Okay, minus mm -hmm. 0.8. How about if I bring just like this? What do you think? No correlation. Wonderful. That's perfect. That's one of the easiest. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, with the by statistics, we figured out that the Pearson correlation is easy, mm -hmm. screening easy, right? 
Ja. Yeah. Všechno se pro finance easy, bias easy. Mm-hmm. Statistical hypothesis so easy. Confidence mm-hmm. interval easy. You mm-hmm. see, it's so easy. The best statistics are really easy, right? Mm-hmm. Do you agree with that? Yes, yeah. Okay. There is one more thing that number needed to treat and number needed to harm. And this is it and we are done? This is the whole biostat? Yeah, this is the whole biostatistic. Wow. Yeah. There is just one more thing, the clinical trials. Uh-huh. Number needed to treat and number needed to harm. This you is- know, I, 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 re- I, I was looking for a tutor before I talk to you. And no, this guy no. wants to charge me $200 an hour. No, no need for a tutor, no. We are <laughs> friends, we have to help each other. <laughs> and, and well, I we... can pay you 1200 but I'll definitely pay you. No, no, I... that's, no, no, no. I, I, you know, I've been, like, in my college, when I was in the college, like, I was, I was doing that study groups, and that's for, like, for three hours each day. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm used to it. Okay. Well, I like good. it's my pleasure. I like to, to do that. Okay. Okay. Now now we will discuss about the number needed to treat and number needed to harm, right? Mhm. Okay. Number needed to treat and number needed to harm is so easy. Mhm. Sometimes we in, we in, we are invent we are humans we invent drugs right mm-hmm. sometimes a drug okay mm-hmm. give an improvement mm-hmm. sometimes the drug <laughs> end up negative hurting the people rather than helping them okay mm-hmm. yeah. With this clinical trial, we have said that we intervene, okay? Mm-hmm. We intervene. We mm-hmm. use the drugs, but it appeared, some drugs appear to be helpful, some drugs appear to be not, okay? Right. So, there is two calculations. If, if it is a good drug, and if it is a bad drug, mm-hmm. if it's a good drug, do you think I should search for number needed to treat or number needed to harm? I think number needed to harm. If, if, it, if the drug is positive, like if I take... So I think we should be giving it to people. So number needed to treat. Yeah, that's perfect. We figured out number needed to treat. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the attributable risk reduction. Mm-hmm. Risk reduction. How much it reduced the risk. Mm-hmm. And the, there is a negative, like there is a bad drug who, who mm-hmm. hurt, hurt the people. Mm-hmm. We search about number needed to harm mm-hmm. and attributable risk. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, the number needed to harm, number needed to treat is a very simple concept once we understand attributable risk and attributable risk reduction. Okay? This attributable risk reduction and attributable risk is mm-hmm. sometimes confusing, but after I solved so many biostatistic questions, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I figured out a, a very wonderful way mm-hmm. to know it so easily. I'll mm-hmm. give you an example. Mm-hmm. Imagine we take uh, like 100 people mm-hmm. who have cancer. Okay. And imagine we take 50 people who do not have cancer, okay? Mm-hmm. We gave them a treatment. Mm-hmm. Out of those 100, mm-hmm. after we gave them the treatment, mm-hmm. imagine like 80 of them cured. Mm-hmm. Those, about those who are 50 who do not have the cancer, Mm-hmm. Let's imagine what, let's put 100, so that's for easy mm-hmm. calculation. One hundred. Mm-hmm. After the treatment, mm-hmm. let's say just 20, 20% of them cured, okay? 
Mm-hmm. So now the it's appeared that the drug is helpful. It's good, right? Mm-hmm. So what we are going to uh, to search for the attributable risk or the attributable risk reduction? A R R. Wonderful. Attributable, attributable risk reduction. That's perfect. Mm-hmm. Attributable risk reduction. Mm-hmm. I, I'll tell you, it doesn't matter. Like just, just you, you just divide those people who have cured, or you can divide mm-hmm. the people who do not cure. Okay, doesn't matter. Let's mm-hmm. let's imagine. Let's put those names who are exposed. Okay, who are mm-hmm. not exposed. Mm-hmm. This, this, we gave them the treatment, this no treatment, okay? This, we gave them the treatment, this, uh, we do not give them the treatment, okay? Mm-hmm. This is just a book. People who receive the treatment, 80% of them mm-hmm. got cured. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. The people who do not did not receive the treatment, mm-hmm. just 20% of them cured. Okay. Mm-hmm. So how do you, how do we calculate the attributable risk reduction? First of all, just to draw that drawing, okay? Mm-hmm. You will solve any difficult question. You will never any difficult question. It won't stop in your hand. Just I have like, a quick question. Quick question here. So why are we giving the people anti-cancer drug when they don't have cancer? These 100 people, we give no treatment, and 20 got better. What they got better from? Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Those have cancer as well. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I just made a mistake. Okay. I was like, <laughs> let's, let's give everybody happy pills. No, yeah, I'm just yeah, kidding. I'm sorry. No, okay. no, I just wanted to make sure like I was missing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, just okay. those who, who are... Who, both, both are cancer. cancer, and then then one got the treatment, and one did not get the cre- yeah. treatment. So, so the group that got the treatment, 80, 80 of them got better, and the group who did not get the treatment, 20, 20 got treatment. So it's pretty obvious that the treatment is beneficial because eighty percent people got better. Yeah. So with this, eighty, uh, like we can, eighty to twenty. Okay. How? What is mm-hmm. the attribute of a risk reduction? So it'll be four. Four. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now we want to know the number needed to treat. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. We can like it's, it's multiplied by one hundred. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can like we can say like. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. For for four hundred percent. Okay. Sure. Okay, the number needed to treat. It's so easy. Just like just divide the one by absolute risk reduction. Okay, mm-hmm. you get the number needed to treat. Okay, exactly the same situation. If we take like a bad drug, mm-hmm. like if you take example, if you take one hundred percent, one hundred people who have cancer. Mm-hmm. And 100 people who have cancer as well. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. People, we gave them a treatment. People who do not. No treatment. Mm-hmm. Okay? Let's, this time, let's suppose that the drug did the contrary. Like, those 100 people, okay? Once we give them the treatment, just 20 who survived. Mm-hmm. 20% of them who survived. Mm-hmm. The people who received no treatment, mm-hmm. just 80%. 80% of them survived. Mm-hmm. So with this situation and with this case scenario, do you think that drug is beneficial or harming? No, it's bad. The non-treatment group did better. Yeah, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. So the mm-hmm. attributable risk reduction... Mm-hmm. I just made a little mistake. I'll tell you what is it. The so point... with, the, with the previous case, I'll tell you. But uh-huh. this now, now, now it's all perfect with this uh, situation. So now, 
attributable we use the attributable risk right mm -hmm. okay the attributable risk now 20 over 100 so equal mm -hmm. to 20 percent right mm -hmm. and it's 80 percent for the for those who are who have received no treatment okay mm -hmm. what we are going to do the attributable risk and attributable risk reduction it's not dividing mm -hmm. okay we use mm -hmm. the minus. I did that mistake. Why mistake? Uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. We 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 might we do we subtract the eighty percent out of the twenty percent. Eighty percent out of the minus twenty percent. Mm -hmm. We will get sixty percent. Mm -hmm. This is the attributable risk. This mm -hmm. 60, 60 is the attributed risk mm -hmm. to the drug. To the drug, yeah. So the number needed to harm mm -hmm. will be just like this. One over the attributable risk. Okay? Mm -hmm. Which is like, I'll tell you how much. Number needed to harm is equal mm -hmm. one. Well, 60%, so 100 over 60? Yeah, over 60%. Mm -hmm. We can say number needed to harm. So we can remove this, so it will be 10 over 1 over 6. 6. It will be just like example 1.4. Mm -hmm. Point, point, point 7. Let's mm -hmm. imagine 1.7. It will be just like this. So let's compare it to 2, okay? Mm -hmm. So those people, we, we will we give him to 2 people, okay? If we give him to 2 people, we will mm -hmm. hurt 1 person, okay? Mm -hmm. This be this drug. If we give it to two more people, we will give will hurt one person. Do you imagine mm -hmm. how dangerous is this drug? Yeah. The same issue with this thing. I have just made the, that mistake should not be divided. Okay. It should be like. We also subtract here. So A R R. We should subtract. Subtract the large number from the small number. That's all. A E minus twenty is sixty. Yeah, attributable risk reduction. Mm -hmm. Should be eighty. So then it'd be like one over twenty. Minus twenty, it will be sixty. Oh wait. Okay. Yeah, six. So one over sixty. Sixty percent. So number mm -hmm. needed to treat. Mm -hmm. It will be the same. It will be right. two. Like we need, if we give the drug to two more person, we will treat one person mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So imagine how much is effective is this drug. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's all. Now I'll give you an exercise, okay, mm -hmm. and you do it, okay? Sounds like a plan. Okay. Those are oh, my, yeah. my favorite, the number three. It's really fun, one of the easiest. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I'll give you an exercise. Hey, Mo, so everybody in your family is like you, or you are just really different? There is most, most there is some, some like me and some... Uh, not like you. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm different. I'm I'm uh, I'm doing many courses like uh, personal development and meditation and so many. That's courses. what I said. I, I I told you. I said. I bet your family thinks that you're a little strange. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> strange in a good way. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm I'm really happy to know you. You are really such a nice person to know. I'm oh yeah, really... you are too. I mean, Thank you, hey, so much. you know. So it goes back to Ali actually, then probably it goes back to your parents, you know. Yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> and thank you for letting me Eva Eva is really nice person. Yeah, I... she is really a nice person, you know. Um just like you, I I believe the point is to like help each other, you know? Yeah, like, to exactly, yeah. End of the day, it's about people that really matters. One can have high scores and one can go to Harvard and this and that. None of that really matters unless you have good people in your life. That's what I... Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, exactly. That's that's what I'm, what, I, what matters. Me as well. Yeah. That's what matters in my life. So when, when you get your scores, you let me know. And I'm going to do really my best Thank to have so Dr. Debella, who is the... Um, he's the chief of medicine at a local hospital where the student from University of Central Florida rotate. So he knows the dean of the 
University of Central Florida School of Medicine, Dr. German. So he knows her. So, and it'd be really nice if he can uh, at least send your information to her and hopefully at least she talks to you to like figure it out, you know, what the options are. Okay, that's perfect. That will be perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really? And then, of course, you know, Eva knows um, Dr. Smoller, who's a chief uh, chief of, I think he's the director of um, anatomy and patho dermatology and dermatology and pathology at University of Rochester, New York. Yeah, she told me. She told me that. Once and I... then I know for a fact that University of Philadelphia takes transfer but you already missed the deadline for this year because the medical school starts in july oh so if for one year if you have to like do a mph or you know do something else i think it's really worth it so once you have your scores and your personal statement is ready we should actually reach out to the people at university of philadelphia and find out what's up oh that's perfect because the other. University of Michigan, they not they don't take transfer students, but I think there is no harm. You can still go there because they're telling. I went on, went to their website and they're saying that because they have a integrated curriculum, you know, between the second and third year, which I kind of don't, you know, like whatever. So they're saying that because they have an integrated curriculum, they don't take transfer students. But I think still there is no harm once you have your step scores, once you have your personal statement. Just put on a business suit, just go over there and like talk to them because you are there, you know? Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's Michigan, Michigan University, right? Yeah. On their website, they say they don't take transfer students, but, you know, people say all kinds of things. But if you are there with a really high scores and, you know, you're just really... I don't know, motivating and inspiring personality and just this good heart, I don't see why would they not be interested. You know what I mean? Even though they say that we don't take transfer students, but people say all kinds of yeah, things. I, I, yeah, I, I think so. I, I, when I, I have messaged many Caribbean medical schools, they have, they became so happy and told me, like, we accept you, like, but but I waited, but I, I prefer to wait for my step one score and then we, I apply for it. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, I think you, you are really better off going to um, U.S. medical school, even if you have to wait for a year. Reason being is getting a residency is much, much. As an IMG, the chance of getting residency is like fifty-five percent, and as a U.S. medical school graduate, the chance of getting residency is ninety-five percent. You're not gonna have a problem because you are like the top one percent. But why you want to have that little chip on your shoulder that you went to a non-U.S. medical school? And if you have to go, then you go to the schools, for example, Ross University, St. George, any of the programs that are approved in California. So there are four programs that are approved in California. Yeah. St. George, Ross University, SABA, and AUA, AUC, actually five are approved in California. Yeah, and CMU as well. You said that. CMU is approved in California? You you have said that it's approved, right? No, no, it's A U C. A U C. CMU is not approved, right? No, no. A U A A U C Seba Ross University and Saint George. So I think Seba University is the cheapest one. Um, but they will probably gonna have you on the island for the fifth semester. And Ross University you can do the fifth semester in Michigan, right? Yeah. But the Ross University is asking for MCAT scores. And I think those MCAT scores are just a formality. So once you get your scores, I would just go ahead and take this MCAT score and get, get over with it. Once you get your score, you let me know. I will try to put you in touch with, what's his name? Dr. Carey. He is the, um, he's the guy in Miami here in Florida. Okay, and that's he perfect. Can, Thank he, you so much. Yeah, he can probably put you in touch with the um, people who are higher up, you know? Okay, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, you come on. You're welcome. That's really perfect. Yeah. Okay, now now we will uh, give you an exercise? Yes, yeah, I'm ready okay. for it. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Let's say we take 1,000 1, mm -hmm. people with cancer. Mm-hmm. And 500 people, cancer mm -hmm. as well. 
Mm -hmm. Those we give them treatment, those we do not. Mm -hmm. The people who got cured from this, mm -hmm. 800. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the people who do not receive treatment, mm -hmm. those who have cured, Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what is the number needed to treat? Okay. Let's see here. 50 divided by... No, no, no. 1 over 10 times 100. Doesn't make sense. 10%. So we do 80 minus 10. So first I calculate the ARR, right? So that comes to 20. And then I need to calculate number needed to treat, which is 1 over ARR, which is 1 over 20%, which is, I don't know, 5? How? Uh... Have you done the calculation? Can you send it to me? Uh, sure. This is what I did. So I did 800 divided by 1,000. So I got 80%, right? Yeah, that's right. And the, for the other group, I got 50 over 500. So that I got 10%. Yeah, that's perfect. And then I did 80 minus 10. Aha, uh -huh, that's what I made a mistake. 80 minus 10 is equals to 70. And then I do 1 over 70 to calculate number needed to treat. So what is 1 over 70? Uh, let me do the math calculator. 1 divided by 70. It's a pretty, so it's like 0.14%. It's like the number I have is 0 0.01. You have like you know, uh, just there is there was there was just you, your idea is correct. There was just uh, a miscalculation, as you have said exactly. This 0 0.8, right? Uh huh. And this 0 0.1, right? Okay. So the attributable risk reduction. You have already got those values, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The attributable risk reduction. Is always, always, and those numbers mm -hmm. need to treat and number needs to follow. The larger value from the my, subtracted from the minus value. So it is 0.8 mm -hmm. minus mm -hmm. 0.1 mm -hmm. become 0.7. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So number needed to treat is, is 1 over 0.7. 1 over 0.7, which reads about like it's about 2 mm -hmm. or 1 and a half. Like, you know, this drug is really effective because if we treat two more mm -hmm. patients, we will save one of them. Imagine mm -hmm. how, how, how much effective is this drug? Mm -hmm. Okay. 1.42. 1.43, actually. Yeah, you can say 1.43. But in the exam, because we, in the exam, they give you... Round numbers. Yeah, they give you like, uh, you will appear like you give you accurate numbers, okay? We it's here just same, want, you know, the ideas, okay? Three is like means two, so if I treat two people, I can do what? If I treat two more patients, I will save one of them. So that's 50%. Yeah. So, that's I mean, somebody could just get better by not taking the medication. No, if I give it to two patients, number needed to treat. That mm -hmm. the number needed to treat is two, like mean. Let, let's suppose it's two. If I give the treatment to two patients, mm -hmm. one of them will be will s survive. Like mm -hmm. if I give it to one hundred patients, fifty mm -hmm. percent uh, of them will survive. Okay. Yeah, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, which is good. It's better yep. than some some drugs. You know, some drugs like if I give it. To 10, I've mm -hmm. encountered cases. If I give it to 10 people, just I give mm -hmm. it to 10 patients mm -hmm. in order to treat one person. Okay. Yeah. So this is good. It's very good. So I'll give you mm -hmm. one more exercise. So that, so yes. that's okay. Now, what I, what I want you to do is that there is 200, okay? Mm-hmm. People. This is important, the number that you I got to make a question on. 
Okay. On 100, all mm-hmm. have cancer. Most commonly ask in the cancer issue. Mm-hmm. Those I give them a treatment, those mm-hmm. no treatment. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the people all out of those 200, when I give them a treatment, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. it appeared that helped 50% of them. Mm-hmm. But those who did not receive the treatment, they recovered. Let's suppose like 60%, 60 recovered, okay? Mm -hmm. So what's the number needed to harm? So here again, we calculate AR. So AR would be 60 minus 50. That would give me 10, which is 0.1%. And if I do... 200, it's 200. No, 50. Yeah, this this 200 and this 50. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, so so just, yeah. just let Quite me know bad. what's I... the number needed to harm. We'll do it together. I still have to do the calculation. I haven't done the calculation. I was being silly. 1 over 10, and then this guy is 1 over 100. 60 over 100. So this guy is 0. 0.6, and this guy is 0. 0.1. That's what I did. One over ten is what? Oh, one divided by ten. Clear. Maybe. Okay, so that's point one. So then I have point six. Ar equals to point six minus point one. That equals to point five. And n number needed to harm is one over point five, which equals to. Hundred so twenty people. Let me see. One over divided by one divided by point five. The, the the issue is just like this. People. So and then number needed to harm is two. According to my calculation. Oh, that's that's perfect. You read. you see just like this. Uh, mm-hmm. We want to do, let's do it together. Okay. Mm-hmm. From this, we can conclude that. 50 over 200. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's basically one fourth. Excellent. Which is 0.25, right? Mm-hmm. Why am I calculating wrong? Because I did 50 divided by 200. Ah, oh, I made a mistake. Okay. I made a mistake, yeah. Calculation. It's, it doesn't matter if it's calculation. You can use the. Yeah, it's four. One fourth, so that's 0.25. Yeah, on this one, 60 over 100. Uh huh. So all point six, six, right? Yeah. So six minus always, point. Always rule of thumb. Always in those calculations, you just subtract the larger value from the small value. Don't confuse yourself because right. you always get a positive. Mm-hmm. Attributable risk all point six. Sorry, so no, five point seven. All point two five. Okay, we will get yeah. all point three five, right? Mm-hmm. So. The number needed to harm, well, how much is this? It's one. 1.3. 3, 5. Equal like 100 over 35, mm-hmm. which is it's approximate 3. 3. Like we need to, if we give this treatment to three more patients, we we're going to harm half of them? We will kill one of them. So how do we come to now killing one of them? But when the other one will be say the number needed to treat is two, if we give to two because other people, we'll fix one. Yeah, ah. it's one. It's always one. Ah. No matter what this, because it was two, we, mm-hmm. it's one. If it was three, it's one, it's still one. Mm-hmm. If it was 100, it's one, it's still one. This number needed to harm. Like mm-hmm. the number, uh, the number of treatment. If you give the medication to three people, then we're gonna hurt one of them. Yeah, one of them. Okay. This is one of uh, this from its definition. Mm-hmm. To, to harm one of them. That's the definition. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is great. I guess it's my job to apply this. Yeah. Now, now sounds easy, right? Mm-hmm. That's number needed to treat. Number needed to harm. Mm-hmm. That's greening. Mm-hmm. That's the whole by statistic. You see? Exactly. See so how easy is this? Now we will do a 
a, a rapid review, right? Uh-huh. Okay, you're ready? Yeah. You will help me with this rapid review. Now, okay. about the, the screening, uh -huh. uh, can you, can you, do, do you have something like paint to draw in? I don't know, let's see what do I have on my computer. Okay, no problem, no problem. We can't figure it out. Like, let me know about the screening. Mm -hmm. So screening, what we are looking for is for sensitivity, specificity, what's positive. The, what's the law of the sens sensitivity? So sensitivity, we look at the first column and it's basically true divided by all. And then the specificity, we look at the column number two, which is again true divided by all on that column. Perfect. Positive and predictive then, value? Huh? Positive. Negative predictable value is the. Um, so then again, that's the true divided by uh, all. Is That's the first row. No, that's the second row. It's not the first row. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. So it's basically true negatives divided by all. Okay, how about the accuracy? So that one I kind of forgot. Let me cheat. Um, oh. Accuracy is. <laughs> oh, not, not, okay. Not important, but no, never mind. That's true positive divided by all. True positive plus true negative. All the true uh, divided by all. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. All the true, true positive plus true negatives divided by all. Okay. So it's basically is the um, true positive which is like the first cell, right? So like if I make it A, so that's true positive. And then the true negative is like A, B, C, D, right? So then like A plus D divided by all of them. Okay, that's perfect. The relative mm -hmm. risk, what is the relative risk? Relative risk. What is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Relative risk is the case, uh, sorry, cohort studies. Yeah. Uh, it's low is is the what is this low oh so this is the um i thought we said um exposed over non exposed wonderful you are wonderful incidence over exposed incidence over uh -huh. non exposed mm -hmm. okay this is the relative risk right mhm mm this is the relative risk the odds ratio that was easy so that's basically ad over bc that's perfect Oh, wonderful. That's very first. Now we will talk about the attributable risk. Mm -hmm. Incidence exposed mm -hmm. minus unexposed. Don't mm -hmm. don't confuse yourself. Attributable risk and attributable risk reduction. Mm -hmm. The larger value, large. Over the mm -hmm. sh uh, minus small value, okay? Mm -hmm. That's all that you need to know. We have mm -hmm. tried so many exercises. Mm -hmm. Number needed to treat. So that's just like one over ARR attri attributed reduction rate. Perfect. Number needed to harm. So that's like one over um, AR attributable risk. That's perfect. You're perfect. Uh, how about selection bias? What is the selection bias? So selection bias is when we are, um, we as a scientist, oh, we are losing the people, no? Selection bias is like whoever we are selecting. That's perfect. I thought that's the selection bias. That's perfect. Or the selection bias, the attrition rate. Selection bias, where there's the healthy, the hospital, okay? And mm -hmm. when, when we're losing, as well, it's the same. So, person, mm -hmm. uh, person bias. Oh, that's the one is the one where the, um, like we're looking at some specific population, but that does not correlate to the um, population at large. Like if you're only looking at people studying for step exam versus everybody else in terms of stress okay. or whatever. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay, that's perfect. How about Hawthorne bias? Oh, that's the one, the behavior change when one is being washed. So like right now, I know that you're watching, so I'm being good. Okay. Yeah. Just <laughs> okay. Pro procedure uh, measurement bias. Huh? So measurement, that's just like um, we're making mistake when we're gathering um, the data or like 
how we're ca doing calculations, I guess. Yeah, that's perfect. Gathering calculations, you are perfect. Recall mm -hmm. bias? So recall is just like... Um, Mm, like an example, it's like, hey, did you do all those biostat questions? And I'd be like, yeah, I think I did them. Not really. Yeah. How about the lead time bias? So lead time bias is the one where the um, end result. Oh, early early diagnosis does not change the overall um, pro prognosis of the disease. Perfect. Confound but then. So have that same thing as a lag bias where they were saying that oh when you de get detected early people can make their plans and things like that I, there's a question in new world i thought it was a prostate cancer and i was like oh i know this one lead time bias but they're like no this is lag time bias yeah the lag the lag time bias uh, is different in, the, in its concept there's oh. there's a diagram that con that's yeah, there's a diagram in the infer in New World, yeah. I'll, I'll take a look at it. I'll just ask you if I'm still I'll, confused. I'll show it to you. Uh-huh. Authorization. Like. Okay, I'll, uh, it's not uh, here. I will. Oh, that's fine. I'll, 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 t I'll ask you later. That's okay. Okay, I have there was there was a wonderful diagram to clarify this concept mm -hmm. really perfectly. I will let you know once I get okay. that diagram. Okay, no problem. There's one more bias which is called Pygmalion bias. Pygmalion bias. Yeah, you know what that is? No. It is the observer. Oh. Expectancy bias. The same researcher belief, okay? Uh. It's the contrary to the uh, Selection bias. Yeah, it's contrary to uh, also don't confuse yeah. it with Hawthorne bias. Hawthorne mm. bias, like if you are studying me, I change my behavior, okay? Right. Yeah. But Pygmalion bias, if you if you expect me to be good, okay, you will report me that I'm good, okay? Right, yeah. Okay, that's the Pygmalion bias. So the mm -hmm. Pygmalion bias is the researcher, is the one who study. Imagine mm -hmm. that P, P from P, physician. Mm -hmm. Okay, physician is study. But Hawthorne is the people who are being studied, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the difference. How about confounding? Confounding is like where there's um one more um, uh, factor, you know, like the example we talked about is um, COPD and smokers, but then we say, oh, maybe people, is the alcohol is also actually causing, but when you take the, exclude the people who are drinking, we still find that COPD and smoking is heavily correlated, I guess. Yeah, that's perfect. How about the positive skewed distribution? So this is where you have the tails on the right. And then the mean is more than the median, and median you are, is more. You are, you are, watch, you are watching your notes, or? No, 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 no. I'm just saying it. Mean equals to mean is more than the median, and the median is more than the mode. That's perfect. And negative is skewed. So that's like on the negative tail, right? So it's the opposite. So here, the mean is less than the median, and median is less than the mode. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, and there is okay. How about the statistical? Uh, a statistical hypothesis, if the p-value less mm -hmm. than 0.05, okay, if I got the, my calculation is correct, while in mm -hmm. the real life is not correct, which mm -hmm. time over that? So you, you're you saying that your data, your p-value is less than 0.5, but then it does not match the reality? Yeah. So then we made the um, beta error. Type 1. Type one alpha error, sorry, my bad. Yeah, alpha. alpha. Perfect. What what did the contrary happen? Like if I my my calculation is not true, but in reality it does. Okay, so your p value is less than more than 0.5, but it does not match the reality. So now we have made the beta error. That's perfect. That's you are wonderful. That's perfect. 
How about the confidence interval? So the confidence interval is the confidence interval. What about it? It means like we we have to, we have to make sure are. we have to All make right. sure. Yeah. Okay. So if it's less than one, then we can we cannot be confident, right? Yes. So if it is more than then we are yeah. If it is less than one, we call it less significant. Yeah. If it's more than one, both the values more than one. If any yeah. one of the value less mm -hmm. than one, it's called less significant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If both more than one, both, that means right. significant. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Uh, how about chi square? What's chi square? So the chi square is when we are comparing two means. No, wait a second. Categorical outcomes. Proportions okay. of to uh, this sample, okay? Uh, oh yeah, the big sample proportions. Yeah. How about ANOVA? So when we are comparing more than two groups. Wonderful. Two sample t test. Uh, two sample t test is when we are comparing the uh, means in the same group. Two sample t test. Oh, that's the two different groups. Two different groups, okay. Two different means. Wonderful. How about the pair T test? Ah, so that's the comparing two means within the same group. So they are, they are paired, okay. Okay, that's perfect. That's, that's, T that's two all two. about the biostatistic. Now you have mastered the biostatistic. Yes, I have. Let me do some questions. Yeah, that's perfect. There are yeah. two more things that... Okay. There's just two more things, okay? Okay. And you will be all set. Mm -hmm. Just two more things. Just I think it's not that much high yield, but I have encountered some of the questions questions about mm -hmm. them. So there's you can you can know them. It's good to know them, okay? Mm -hmm. The confidence interval. Mm -hmm. There's a calculation for the confidence interval. Okay. The calculation is says just like the following the mean mm -hmm. how, how if, if sometimes they ask you to calculate the confidence interval plus mm -hmm. minus z mm -hmm. multiplied by standard error of the mean mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. the z the z is like the mean uh, right what, what what do you say is the mean like as if whatever they have? The Z is different. If it is 90, if, if they ask you about, say, what is the 95% confidence interval, mm -hmm. the Z, this you should memorize those numbers. Z mm -hmm. is 1 of, ni of 96, okay? Mm -hmm. If it is 99% confidence interval, mm -hmm. so the Z should be 2. Point six. Mm -hmm. Let's compare it by two. Okay. Mm -hmm. If it is ninety-five percent, it's two. Mm -hmm. If it's ninety-nine percent, confidence interval, mm -hmm. it's two point six. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say. I I will give you uh, an example. Okay. You're ready. Mm -hmm. As the previous of you are some of the step one exam result that we have talked earlier, okay? Mm -hmm. Imagine the mean we said 220, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is the confidence interval, 95% confidence interval, mm -hmm. if the standard error of the mean is 10? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is 95 confidence interval? Or if it Nine? is five, if it is five, let's right. give it five, okay? So I will I will give you that. Confidence interval, the mean. So what's the confidence interval? So mean is 220. Yeah. I want confidence okay. interval 95%, okay? Uh-huh. I want you to give me, give me two numbers, x, y, okay? Uh-huh. Mean is 220. Mm-hmm. Z as it's ninety five percent, we said it's equal to two. Mm -hmm. And the standard error of the mean is five. Mm -hmm. You just have this 
this law and uh, just apply this. Okay. And so two twenty plus five. Plus minus. This is plus minus z uh, multiplied by a standard error of z. Two twenty plus minus five. So what do you give me the? How about the z? Two. You yeah, said ninety five percent. So how much it will be? 220 plus minus 2 times the standard mean. Yeah, that's perfect. So how, how much how much do you think is the confidence interval? What's the standard mean? You said 5? Standard error of the mean is 5. Okay, so five. that's like 10. So it's going to be either 230 or it's going to be 210. Perfect. You are wonderful. Without even I telling you that you figured this out. It's from 210. Up to 2.30, okay? Uh -huh. this so they give us all these other values, right, to calculate this, if yes. they want me to calculate it? Yeah, you we, you used all of the values. It's pretty mm -hmm. straightforward, even if you encounter the question like this in the exam. It's a pretty mm -hmm. straightforward. They give you the mean, mm -hmm. they give you the 25%, mm -hmm. and you should figure out that Z is 2, mm -hmm. and they give you that standard error of the mean, they, mm -hmm. they will give it to you, okay? So you're saying Z is 25%, so how it is 2? You mean there's, you mean to say 95%, then I know it's 2. 95% uh, is 1.96, so it's equal to uh, 2. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it's 99% Z equal 2.6. Right. But as I have told you, that 95% confidence interval, that's what I requested. Mm -hmm. So okay. it will be just like this, confidence interval, mean plus minus Z, Mm -hmm. Sam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mean mm -hmm. it's two twenty plus minus z which is two. Mm -hmm. Imagine z is just like look like two. Right? Mm -hmm. This is very important to memorize that. Five two twenty plus minus ten. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it sounds easy, right? Yeah. That's perfect. And there is uh, one last thing which is the phases of clinical trial. There is four phases, you know them? I think so. Uh, first one, I, last one. What? I said I know the first one and the last one. Last one is the post market, right? Because we. Are... Yeah, post marketing. I I got a question like on on, on them. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty straightforward. It's not considered by statistics. There is no calculation or something like that. Like uh, first, you see, you, you say, uh, is it safe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, the phase two doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Just like, let's summarize them. Yeah. Phase one. Mm -hmm. That is it safe? Phase two doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Phase three. Is it good or better? Right. And phase four. Can it stay? Mm hmm That's all that you need about those phases. It's a pretty straightforward even when you get a question in the exam. Mm hmm yeah, you will, you will solve them. It's pretty easy. So I think that we have covered like most of the biostatistical questions. Mm -hmm. And there is one last thing that the precision and accuracy. Mm -hmm. You know what that is, right? Like accuracy, precision. Like if it is, if it is, if it's point in the center, that means mm -hmm. it's accurate. Right. But. But if it's repeat, keep on repeating. Keep hitting the same point, that's precision. Yeah, that's precision, okay. Mm -hmm. That's all about. So that's right. my statistic. It's easy, right? It is easy. Yeah, so now I'm you, you have... Questions, and now I'm going to let you know how easy it is. <laughs> what? I said I will do the questions, and then I will find out how easy it is. Yeah, you can, you can do the questions, okay? Yeah. And uh, just keep those concepts. Right. And, 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 I'm going to do that. 
and I will, you know, I have recorded this uh, lectures. I, I can send, I can send them to you so that you can. Okay. You can Sounds good. Them like, uh, you can review them so fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. so hey, I was going to ask you, do you have the pharmacology questions just for step one? Do you have like a PDF or something? If you don't, don't worry about it. Because I was thinking, because Ali said that make sure you go over your um, just basic drugs and drug re side effects. And I was like, oh, if there are just questions, I can look at those questions. If not, yeah, I can just I, go. I have, I have something really fantastic. Okay. There's something called the Enki. Have you heard of the Enki? No. Mm. Where I've been living. I have... Uh, Move that. You see, just like this thing. I will send you. Okay. It's called the Enki. Mm -mm. So it's out there in public domain. Yeah, it's really a wonderful tool. I will. I'll let you see how. Mm -hmm. It has a wonderful uh, pharmacology. You can uh, you can review them all. Mm -hmm. mm, it's a special, so I have to. It's just like flashcards. Have you got flashcards? Uh huh. No, it will it will download and will let you know. Mm -hmm. It's downloading. Mm -hmm. So who has done this? Like the people have been keep doing it since like 2000. I mean, it's like what? 2011. Oh, yeah. No, it's all 2015 and 16. 14, 15, 16, last three years. Yeah, exactly. So do you know these people who are putting this information there? I know. I know a good deck. Okay. Uh, that you can review it. Mm -hmm. It's really perfect. I will upload, you know, just install that Enki. Mm -hmm. Okay, install that Enki. Into, you have like, uh, you have Mac, right? Yeah. Do you have a Windows? Oh, uh, I have another laptop that has Windows on it, yes. So you can download it on Windows. Oh, okay. Yeah, because in, in Mac it's $25, that's Enki. But it's Are you really, pay for twenty-five dollars for Mac? What? So if somebody wants to download it, they have to pay twenty-five dollars. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's uh, free on Windows. And Windows, it's free in the Windows. It's really That's, wonderful. Can can help you revise all the pharmacology and everything in a very easy. Okay. In a very easy. And there is one more thing that's called the Memorand. I have purchased it. If you want, if you want my account, like for. Do you like uh, in step three? Do you need uh, step two CK info sometimes? Sure, yeah. So this flashcards. Mm -hmm. I I purchased it. It's it's really wonderful. If you want. Mm -hmm. can give you my account and you see it's really perfect okay see? if you feel okay with that that'd be great i can just look at it yeah that will be look like uh, this dermatology mm -hmm. uh, like miscellaneous q bank notes mm -hmm. like you can you can uh, there you can read them just like this right like moroscope contagiosum books virus science sometimes just like this can read them just like, and you can read them as a games or anything. There's flashcards, what mm -hmm. game, and eliminator. This. Let me show you these games. Mm -hmm.
Allah kim kendi cezam sanasın. Ne prosin? You see? Mm -hmm, the idea is pretty cool. <laughs> it's fun, right? <laughs> see the color. Okay. Okay, I'm just like this. Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> you see, it's nice, right? Yeah, it is pretty cool. Yeah, so I can have a... You want that? It's for step 2 CK. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, it really works. Uh, I have like purchased it, but it, wor it works. Uh, it really works. Okay, so that's it for the, the buy statistic. If, please, if you solve, solve any solve the questions, and if you have mm -hmm. got any like difficult questions or anything like that, don't yeah. bother yourself. Just uh, let me know and we'll discuss it together, okay? Okay, sounds like really good and plan. The buy, st buy statistic is really important to solve the questions. Mm -hmm. Like and and I advise you to start solving questions from right now. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take ten minute break and I'm gonna do some questions. Yeah, because the info is fresh in your mind and you mm -hmm. will you will solve them so easily. Start solving them from now. Okay. You will have lots of fun and you will find them so easy. Okay. 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 I will let you know. <laughs> okay. That's that will be perfect. And All right. Just let me let me tell you something. Like you uh, use your subconscious mind to help you in your life and in your biostatistic and anything you may encounter. Just like imagine yourself that you have mastered the biostatistic and solving them so correctly mm -hmm. and easily. That really help you a lot. Imagine that. Imagine doing that. It's I really, will. Yeah, it's really, it really it will be really helpful. Okay. Sounds pretty good. So I was going to ask you, so what are you doing these days? So you're done with your step one. Are you studying for your step two? Yeah, I'm studying for step two CK. I've done so many mind maps about step two CK. Okay. Yeah, I can share them with you if you like as well. Okay, that'd be fun. I was going to ask you, so are you going to take the exam? Uh, your step, step two before you start school? No, I prefer start school and then I'll take the step two exam. Okay. Okay, I, I have time, right? I have time to... Yeah, you definitely have time. I mean, uh, I don't know. Because I think step two is is like step one. There's not a... Yeah, you know, when I when I was reading step two, you were, I found it really easy. It's same as step one. I, yeah. I said, why I didn't study it from step one? Right. Yeah, it's really easy. Very few additional topics. Actually, step two is easier because you don't have all that biochem. You don't have all that anatomy. Yeah, um, it's much, much more easier, yeah. Much more easier. Yeah, another I'm, I'm another topic that I was, I was wondering if you could help me is the neuroanatomy or the like just the neuro stuff. Like I keep forgetting those. Uh, oh, neuroanatomy. It's, and it's stuff my, like that. you know, neuroanatomy, it's my favorite. I have amazing drawings for them. Okay. If you want, just let me know anytime you have free time okay. and we'll discuss them together. Okay, sounds like a plan. So I'm going to do these biostatic questions and I will let you know how it goes. Oh, okay, that's perfect. And you right. me, I have, I have so many uh, drawings that will help you a lot. Okay, Okay. great. Okay, and try try to use that accelerated brain learning state, that exercise that I gave you. Like, imagine the number three taking a deep breath and number two, number one, uh, uh, before you start studying and put a purpose. Sometimes people study without knowing a purpose, mm -hmm. and it's important to uh, to speed to uh, to develop your speed reading. Mm -hmm. Like there is there is many many steps for for speed reading. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you like do you do you do you see me now? How yeah. I just like 